speaker, this young Miller man, he's coming from me, and um, he's an advocate of creating a human culture. He believes that we need psychological safety spaces. We need that ingredient to allow people to be themselves and to create on themselves. And we need that to inspire others. Thank you, Jan, for being here with us. Thank you, Nuria. Okay, I think there is something, there's one thing that really unites us tonight. And that's the desire that we are changing the way we are doing business today. So I would like to express my thank you for all coming here and making that effort, because I think together we will really make a difference. And for me, I have the honor to speak about how you could consciously activate your human potential and then create a thriving organization. But let's start with three questions. So if the question is a yes for you, please raise your arm. So do you regard culture as a key priority for leaders? Almost everybody, thank you. Next question, do you understand your own company culture? Okay, maybe 30%. And last question, do you believe your organization has the right culture? Which one? The one in the brochure and the website? <laughs> How you experience it? Oh, three hands, four hands. Okay, 10%. So this is the result of the same question that have been asked to some CEOs a few years back. So I think we can at least say that Peter Drucker's quote that culture is strategy for breakfast has arrived. But it looks like that we are really struggling in creating a culture. Yeah? So how, how do we create a good culture? That's the question for today. And I would like to start with Richard Brinson, because he says, take care of your employees, and they will take care of your business. It's as simple as that. So if we go and speak to our clients and mention this sentence, sometimes you can inwardly see rolling their eyes and say, okay, this guy's come along and trying to implement another wellness center here. Um, but this is far from what we'd want to do. Yeah? Of course, we have to admit that fun will be part of the journey, but um, we then talk about high performance. And Matt mentioned this earlier. Um, we then mentioned Google study. Matt mentioned this in detail, but also Harvard did the same study. And they also came to the result that psychological safety is the number one reason for high performance. So we are not trying to create another comfort zone here. Yeah? But I strongly believe that humans are hardwired to grow, to contribute, to learn, to deliver great achievements and enjoy it. So we would like to create that learning and high performance zone. And what we experience today is that most of the companies we are working in, with, they are down here in the anxiety zone. They are operating in the anxiety zone. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the question is where the fear comes from. And normally, fear arises when the people have the feeling that their needs will not be met anymore, not be fulfilled anymore. So what we want to do is now we would like to reduce the anxiety and move up to the learning and high performance zone by increasing the psychological safety. And what we just learned is 
about the needs. So finally, psychological safety emerges when the leaders take care of the needs of the employees. So now the big question. Sometimes I'm not even aware about my own needs. So how do I know the needs of my employees? And here we are using a nice method from a guy called Richard Barrett. On the right side, he, developed, he understood that what you're doing, everything what you're doing, is driven by fulfilling your needs. How you do that depends very much on the consciousness level you are operating from. So he has then integrated Maslow's hierarchy of needs into his consciousness level model. And what he then discovered was that there are different values at each of these levels. So what he did is he mapped thousands of values into it and created an online um, values assessment. So whether people simply pick 10 values and you can do this on an individual level and a team level, an organizational level. And here I brought one example of a mid-sized organization, and you can see the, high, the, the higher levels are more or less driven by common good, and the lower levels are driven by self-interest, by the focus of self, on self-interest. Both is necessary for a thriving organization. But then we ask three questions. The first question is, what's important for you personally? And this question is really good because it indicates who is working at your company. What do these people really understand and what they need? So in this case, they answered with, with values on level five, which stands more or less for meaning and purpose. So don't dare to tell them they have to do something without telling why. Huh? So, but then the next, second question is then, how um, do they feel at work today? And now suddenly you see it's dropping down to level three. And level three is mainly about achieving self-worth through performance. But what you can see now is this is happening in a very unhealthy way because suddenly these red bars appear um, and the red bar stands for values of, that are fear-driven. Yeah, so there's fear in it. And you can see many more red bars though with 40% of the values being fear-driven in this company, this, pro this company has a problem with uh, losing a lot of energy in frustration and conflicts. So if you then ask them the third question, what's the, how they would love to work, then you can see there's a high need in this organization for transformation. They really want to change. They do not want to work in the peer environment area anymore. They would like to change. And behind this, there's a lot more information. So you can look at the shared values of this organizations, or maybe you took the, take the top 10 of these, and then you get a good indication where to start, because you clearly see what you need to do. So let me summarize. If you, as a leader, take care of your employees and fulfill the needs, you reduce the fear, which automatically increases the psychological safety, the people dare to speak up and share their ideas, and you activate the human potential, so the creativity will be there, the engagement will be there, which again will boost your business, and that will deliver good results, and with the good results you can even invest more in taking care about your people and fulfilling the needs, so instead of doing this cycle once, you enter a spiral, an upward spiral of a thriving organization, and you enter a transformation journey. But before you embark on that journey, you need to answer one question, honestly to yourself. And that is this one. Are you really willing to take care of your people first? Because we have recently worked with a company where the number one sales rep was behaving like a monster but the boss has tolerated this because he delivered the best numbers. So the question is now, would you 
be willing to remove that guy to unleash the full potential of your whole team? If you can say yes to that question, then you are ready to embark on that upward spiral of a thriving organization. Thank you.